Hey everyone, welcome back to lesson 14 of my free beginner violin course. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the beautiful morning prayer by Pracht. And I'm teaching you this to get you more used to playing in C major with the low second finger, uh, to teach you a little bit about dynamics, so playing loud and soft, and also teaching you to make a beautiful sound on the violin as a beginner. If you're thinking, what is this all about? Uh, I'm Zlata, I'm a professional violinist turned stay-at-home mom, sharing my art and skills online in this course. I encourage you to grab the sheet music, you can do so at violinlessonsforfree.com and sign up so I can email you all the books and resources and sheet music that go along with this course. If you want to follow the previous lessons first, then go to this playlist right here. And don't forget to do your daily warming up that I taught in lesson 12 and you can now do so with the C major scale. Now let's first listen to this piece. Now I will present the slow play along version that might come in really handy. Here it is. playing this piece, do the whole warming up and uh, play the scale. We have a whole note to begin with and that means you have to use whole bow. But I don't want you to start all the way at the extreme frog. It's okay to start a little bit here. Certainly if you want to perform this piece then it's really handy uh, if you have a secure way to start that you don't have to be nervous about. And first try to make a sound that is as beautiful as you can on that C note. Because this is a slow piece, we try to lower the bow speed. So instead of we do. And this asks for some fluency here. And then you start to count. One, two, three, four. And then we can go to the next note. time to get used to playing that slowly actually. Uh, playing slowly is sometimes harder than uh, playing very quickly because um, it is harder in terms of tone production. Um, so make sure that you are between the fingerboard and the bridge, that you're not bowing all the way here or all the way there. Make sure you are bowing straight. We all covered that in the previous 
uh, lessons, but I'm just repeating it here because in these long notes it's important. Then we're going to make a crescendo. So we're going to play louder in bar three. Uh, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you can use more bow. So if you increase the bow speed, then you naturally play louder. And then as we've learned to transfer the weight in the bow, you want to hang a bit more in the bow. So if we play those two notes in bar three, you see, I use more bow for the second note, but then we have to play loud, but with a low bow speed. So we need a lot of weight there and make sure you're not tilting your bow all the time because that also um, makes it sound softer. And you want to use a fourth finger here. And then we're going to make a day crescendo. So we are going to use less bow and to lift the weight a bit. You can do that with your wrist, by the way. Uh, you might want to practice this a little bit. So if you lift your bow, you're using less weight. So you get a softer sound. And then when you add weight, you make your arm heavy and then you get a bigger sound. So if we go again to those E notes. And here you must retake the bow. You want to practice that a couple of times. Retake the bow. Retake the bow. And do this with a circle and not like. Because then your bow starts bouncing or you get that sound or whatever. So do it in a subtle uh, way. Uh, so one, two, three. We have a dot behind that note. Uh, you uh, didn't learn that in uh, lesson 11 about reading. Uh, notes, but a dot means that the note becomes one and a half times longer. So this is a half note that no normally uh, two counts in uh, quarter notes and then now comes three counts. And after that, that little string thingy, that is a rest. Four, and then retake the bow in that rest. So one, two, three, four. And then you see mezzo forte uh, below the notes. Uh, so then we are playing a little bit louder. Not very loud, but mezzo forte is kind of yeah, normal to loud. Fourth finger. Softer, softer, less bow, less weight. One, two, three, four. Soft. And here you have to do the retake very subtly because we have to go right to that piano. That's how to play this song. I also put a piano accompaniment in Sound Slice. That's a really handy tool in which you can play the violin part, piano part, or both at the same time. You can play along, play it in any tempo, play it with a metronome. You can loop certain parts of the song that you find difficult. So that's a really handy tool uh, to uh, practice this song with. And another recommendation for this song is to really read it from the sheet music and make sure that you understand what's there. So don't only look at me and do as I do or something, uh, but try to understand how that works. And some people want to play from violin visualizations or from the grips. And I don't recommend that for the violin. Maybe it works for a guitar, but the violin is a melody instrument. And as you advance, uh, you get so complicated things that you can't follow them along uh, with uh, violin visualization anymore. And you have to read notes. And if you are starting to read notes when you play something complicated, then it becomes really difficult. But if you read notes, like in lesson 11, everybody can learn to read notes in 20 minutes. It's completely not complicated. It doesn't have to distract you from your playing. It makes things 
a lot easier. And if you learn it right away, along with your progress on the violin, uh, then it never becomes an issue. It becomes an issue if you stick to those fingering maps. Now, I want you to enjoy playing this song and really practice it slowly and with a lot of love for every note. So make sure every note is in tune, make sure you make every note sound good and you can spend weeks on this song. I'd rather have you uh, spend a lot of time on this song than that you rush through it again. Practice slowly, I'm going to say it another thousand times and still people practice way too fast. Uh, so that is the biggest tip that I can give you. In the next lesson, I'm going to teach you another, a little bit faster piece by Pracht and that is the melody. So I hope to see you next week. If you want to see that next lesson, then subscribe because that lets me know that you find it interesting and that encourages me to make more of these videos. Okay, happy practicing. Bye bye.